Welcome to the Church Solutions Podcast, brought to you by JSL Solutions. The Church Solutions Podcast is designed to help equip you and your church in the use of technology and other tools and services. And now, here are your hosts, Steve Lacey and Phil Thompson. Hello, everybody, and welcome to another edition of the Church Solutions Podcast. Hi, my name is Steve Lacey. And my name is Phil Thompson. We come to you every week with this wonderful podcast, at least well, we think it's wonderful. Maybe you don't. But uh, we come to you every week just about, and we, uh, we're, a ch- we're a company that works with churches, primarily ministries. Our goal is to help churches use technology to further their purpose. And uh, we have several products, that, which we will tell you about later. How's that sound, Steve? Sounds great. Because we're not here to push ourselves. We're here to help you. And how are we going to help people today? What's the deal? Here's one of the things that I think would be good, and that is uh, let's talk a little bit about blogging, because blogging uh, can help you, can help your church website, and can help connect your people. So obviously, you know, we're this podcast is for people that are involved in ministry and church work, pastors, associate pastors, executive pastors, key volunteers. And so hopefully you're trying to reach your community, right, so, reach people. So who's writing the blog? So this would be a leader. Uh, I would I would say probably the senior pastor. Yeah, most of the time I would think, right? Yeah, most of the time would be a senior pastor, or at least a very key leader. Some churches have, uh, you know, key leaders, the pastors involved, but there's other people involved as well. Mm-hmm. Other churches, you have one or one person that's pretty much the the figure. But So this would be addressed primarily to anybody that really wants to write a blog, but primarily churches right, so and pastors. If you're in ministry, you most likely have a church website, and mm-hmm. this is just another avenue to connect up with your congregation, right? Exactly. It's through a blog. And, and that's what, you know, blogs can do that. So, so here's why you should consider blogging if you're a leader, if you're a senior pastor or whatever, is because uh, blogs have that ability, if you, if you activate this on your blog, people can comment on your blog. And so it's a way to connect people. And mm-hmm. I know there's this uh, fear, oh, there's going to be somebody that makes derogatory comments or doesn't like what I say. And Well, you can always set your blog up where you can, uh, you can approve the comment ahead of time. So right. somebody can submit a comment, and then you, you or your administrator can approve it yeah. or you can publish it. remove any comments later. Or right? you, can, you can remove them later, or you can not have any comments at all, right. which, again, I, I don't. I, I think you should have comments. I think you should make it interactive. All right. uh, that's my take on it. Uh, you don't have to. But the other reason you should blog is it does, it, studies have shown, <laughs> depending on who you talk to, is that when you blog relevant content, it makes you more SEO friendly. Yeah, For your church website, you mean? Right, or? for your church for website. Yeah. So, it's- so, so, or even if your blog sits out there somewhere else, uh, we think it should be on your website or it should be at least linked to your website. Right. Well, it's just another source that points back to your church website. So that, right. that always helps with. So, you know, SEO. if you're going to blog about marriage or something, you know, and you, you, you set it up right, uh, there's a good chance it could show up when people search for, for marriage, right. which would point it back to your church and your website. Right. Does that make sense? It's yes. kind of simplistic, but that's right. the gist of it. So it can help connect people to your website, which hopefully so, would connect people to your church. Right. So we're we're going to be walking through, we're well, kind of talking through the benefits of having a blog post associated with the website, and then we're going to attack or uh, yeah. make some recommendations for how to write a blog post. Yeah, very simple. It, it's really so not hard. The, but we've got the seven tips for... Seven, yeah, at least seven here. we got seven marked, and I may ramble and give you a couple extra for free, but... Uh, I think a lot of times when people think about blogging, and I went through this with my senior pastor, it's like, well, what am I going to say? And where do I start? And, and oh, it's just so overwhelming, which it is a lot of times for any new project or anything you're thinking about doing, if you've never done it or don't do it very often, sometimes you can look at the task and you think, oh, I can't can't do this. What do I have to say that would be interest to anybody? Yeah, or or just the whole idea of of having to put your words down. Yeah. 
on a page. Because for most pastors or people involved in speaking, you know, talking is not a problem usually. It's but the problem comes down to okay, now I got to cap capsulize this and put it on a page or something yeah. that makes sense. But it's not that hard to do. So let's get into. Uh, we've already said why it's important to do it, why you should consider doing. Let, let's kind of talk about maybe how you could do this, and, and not not have it so overwhelming. All right. So number one on our list. So yeah. I I would write a short summary of what your article is about and, and be concise. So this is one or two sentences. Yeah, I think so. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. And this is this is to help you write the article, right? right? Yeah. So yeah, all right. So this would help you write the article. Uh, you could certainly maybe put that in uh, maybe later in the blog itself as an introduction maybe. But let's say, all right, we just talked about using marriage. So let's talk about marriage. Uh, you know, what are you going to talk about specifically to marriage? You know, and maybe maybe you want to talk about, uh, you know, this blog is going to be about marriage uh, mixed families in the sense that, okay, I'm, I'm, I'm getting remarried and the gal I'm marrying now or the gal I am married to now – she has kids from another marriage, you know, how do I deal with that? You know, that's a very. Right. So, you, so that issue. would be, so you'd write a little summary, a little summary. of yeah. what you're going to be talking yeah. about. Okay. And then I would, I would write, you know, probably five to 10 bullet points for the second point here, mm -hmm. five to 10 bullet points expanding on that short summary. So, you know, how to deal with the kids from, you know, another marriage or whatever, and right. the points that you want to get into on so that. So this is developing into an outline, right? Yep. Mm -hmm. so, yep. Right. And then you should probably write a conclusion of what you want your reader to come away with. And again, you want to keep that concise in your notes here. So, so it's you, kind of the goal of the post or, yeah. all right. Yeah. And okay. you, you want to make sure that they come away with, you know, hopefully what you want them to come away with. And, right. And, and hopefully, you know, that, that will. Right. You know, so out. this, you know, this is the third step or the third tip here. And, and so far we haven't written the blog post yet. Right. Correct. So these yeah. are, we wrote a short summary. We got some bullet points. We have a, a conclusion we want them to walk away with. Right. And so these are some things to prep you to yeah. write your blog post. Exactly. Okay. Fourth point would be to come up with a catchy title. Uh, I'm, I like catchy titles. Uh, as, as I think you like Steve, just from knowing you all these years, you like how to headlines, right? Yes. I know, I know that, uh, how to's are a big draw. I and and that, I think uh, they are. I, I work with a guy, you know, I work part-time at a church on the weekends as their executive pastor. And sometimes I speak, uh, but, uh, when we're putting together a series and, and this is a little different, but same lines, I'm, I'm kind of big on how to even for sermon titles, <laughs> which is not what we're talking right. about here, but, 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 and, and the guy I work with doesn't like that at all. Yeah. How to's but, are really big. I know that, uh, you, whenever I need to do something and I go to YouTube and I say, how do I fix my right. ice maker yeah. in my, and there's. You, you pull up this random video and you see that it's got half a million views on it. And you're like, who is looking at this? Yeah. But yes, they are. <laughs> yeah. But I mean, the, the how-to things, and we can get into sermon titles some other time, but but I, I, I like the how-to titles, especially when it comes to blogs. I can yes. understand if you're doing a sermon, and there's then, different ways to do a sermon. I'm very uh, linear, but the guy I work with is not so much linear. He's very conversational and he's excellent, but and he doesn't go for the how-to things on sermon titles. The other category that... I, I guess could be characterized as clickbait would be the, uh, uh, I just saw one yesterday. You won't believe what this pilot did next when yeah. he shows a picture of a plane coming in and you're like, Oh right. my gosh. Yeah. Yeah. It, that's <laughs> one way to hook people. Next. Yeah. So, uh, you know, I, when we talk about writing these blog articles, this is just a suggestion, but we do think a catchy title, Yes, so the, good. so the how-tos are good, and the other piece yeah. that we want to emphasize, you know, not the clickbait one, but uh, including numbers yeah. mm -hmm. in the title, like yeah. the top uh, seven tips for how to write a blog post is, yeah. would be what we'd probably title this. We, we like that. Now, <laughs> yes. There's some people that don't like that, and, and again, you don't have to do it this way. All we're saying is come up with something hopefully yeah. catchy. 
Numbers are good, I think, because it it if we said the top seventy five tips, then people go, hmm, I ain't got time for that. But <laughs> we have the top seven tips. Right. People go, oh, this is not going to be very long. Right. I want to skim it. I'll just read the summaries. And so yeah. it you know kind of leads people into yeah. And we hope that same way with our podcast. We try to do that too. But yeah. I, I think it's it's good to do that. Uh, I, I do think that uh, it makes a little sense. But then, then again, Steve, you and I are pretty linear in the way we think, and not everybody's like that. So. I understand there's going to be some differences. So come All up right. with a catchy so title. So we got a summary, we got bullet points, we got a conclusion, and now we have a catchy title. Yeah. So using the fifth point, uh, and on how to do this blog thing, uh, is using the information that we just mentioned above. And uh, you now have what I would say the ability to write probably two or three paragraphs. Uh, your intro, your main content, and your conclusion. Right. So, uh, you know, that's kind of what you want to have in the body of your blog, your intro, you know, what's this whole thing about your main content, what you're talking about, and then the conclusion of what you want people to walk away with, or, you know, when they switch on to click onto something else. So that should be what you should begin to put in the actual blog post itself. Right. Okay. All right. So moving on then. So I've got my three paragraphs, maybe more. Yeah, and, maybe a little more. Right, so. uh, I'm not real big on long, long blogs. Right. I don't like them. I think anything over. You know, I didn't. I don't have a word count here in front of me, but I think if it takes, in my opinion, if it takes more than five minutes to read, I, I that this is yeah. just my take on it. Right. That's probably a good measure yeah. too. I, I just if I can read it in five to seven minutes. You know, I'm pretty happy with that. All right. So those are, that's one through five. We yeah. Our sixth tip. So sprinkle your blog article, and I think this is important, sprinkle your blog article with some images to highlight the different points, you know, that, that, we're, that you're talking about. Okay. But on the other end, don't use, don't overuse them either. I mean, honestly, what I've done in the past when I was blogging is I would just usually just put one image mm -hmm. in the body of the blog. And so that was it, along the topic. So, yeah, I'm thinking if you're talking about, you know, the mixed marriage thing, a Brady Bunch uh, yeah, something, shot would be something like that would be fine, you know, yeah. uh, but you could grab an image somewhere. You know, there's uh, what, what there's different companies you can buy images from. Right. Uh, you can go online and steal images. There are actually some images that are free. People allow other people get ticked off if you're using images that is connected to them. So you need yeah. to be real smart and yeah. careful. And there's services out there that have thousands and yeah. hundreds of thousands of images that you can um, buy royalties to. Yeah, there, there, and there, there, there are several of them out there. But an image inside your inside your blog post, I think is a good thing. You know, try to find something that's going to relate to your article that you're talking about. And again, it's pretty easy to find those images now. And, and it just brightens it, up your blog. It helps draw people in too. Cause the first thing you're going to see is the image and then the, yeah. the headline, the image and you go, Hmm, this looks interesting. Let's see what's it's all about. Yeah. So that's really the main point of the, of the image in my opinion is, is to really kind of draw people to that. So, so that would be point number six. Um, and then uh, point number six, again, on my notes here, which is a typo, I think. <laughs> so we actually have eight points to talk six, about here. Six A and six B. Yeah, exactly. Well, it's related to the one as well. So you just talk yeah, about that's having a good featured it. image, yeah. right? So add a good featured image that will attract users to your blog and make them click on a link. So we just right. covered that. So I think that was that's a typo on my part. So, All right. Which would probably be another good point to bring out is after you're done, have somebody else read your blog before you publish it. Yeah, that's always a good idea. <laughs> Just for typos. But anyhow, that's a freebie there. All right, so moving on. So number seven, tip number seven. So make sure you have a very short and concise summary of your blog article that tells users, you know, what the blog article is about, what they will get out of it. And, you know, you'll, you use this both as kind of an excerpt, uh, and you can also use it as a meta tag description, you know, for search engines right. to index. So, now, yeah. so meta tags, what are meta tags? What are meta tag descriptions? Uh, can you meta, tell me? <laughs> I, I can. <laughs> um, they are uh, some 
some content on your web page that's not seen or not viewable by you through your browser, right. but search engines see those and other indexing tools. So it's a way to kind of summarize, you know, what this page is about. You know, another way to use your this little short summary is if you're going to market the blog anywhere, um, you'll be you'll have that concise summary that right. points to that blog article. Yeah. So th this would be kind of what I call the back end of the blog. Uh, you know, from an admin perspective, you would put this in. And different different platforms have this place where you can put meta, meta tags in and descriptions in. Right. So would this be the same as our number one summary? Probably. Yeah. Or yeah. maybe it's it's the the matured version of the number one summary. I or the you number know, one item we had. I would give it a little bit. I would write the thing and then look it over and then come up with something again for the, right. for the meta so at description. The end, you That's may, what I would do. Yeah. You may use your original thoughts in the original summary as, you know, oh, and I went this yeah. way, so I'm going to update that summary. Uh, there's controversy on how effective these meta descriptions are for search engines. Uh, one of the things we have found, I think, which rings true, in fact, you and I were talking about it on the way back from lunch, was that, you know, when you're putting stuff out there, you want it to be relevant because that's what Google was looking for. And right, there's yeah. all sorts of tricks and the, people have all these crazy ideas on how to get more. Yeah. Meta tags are uh, supposedly not weighted very highly by Google anymore. So right. may or may not benefit you. Yeah. Won't hurt you, I don't think. But uh, as long as your description is consistent with the content on your page. Yeah. So. I think that's the bottom line. So, uh, you know, as we wrap this up here, uh a lot of people are thinking, well, okay, Phil, maybe I should blog as the pastor, but what, you know, what the heck do I blog about? Um, in my opinion, you know, you just kind of look around you and it, it can be everyday life because what you want to talk about is you want it to be relevant and you want it to, to, to connect in my opinion, where people are at. Mm -hmm. So, you know, you could blog about theology, but I don't really. People may not. Be, and you were somewhat the master of this with uh, the Facebook quips, though. It's typically always everyday life people think about, but they don't really talk about. Right. And, and, and you know, I mean, if you're, you know, like if you're a senior pastor and you're into theology and you like that kind of stuff, that, that's great. But probably most of the people out there are not into that. Right. You know? Now, you could talk about certain topics maybe occasionally that, that are theological. Right. You know, I don't know. But but I think that in my opinion, I keep saying my opinion because it's obviously open to everybody else's ideas. But I, I think you need to, you know, connect on where people are at. So, you know, their everyday life, work issues, family issues. Taking out the trash. Yeah, you could blog about taking the trash out. I, I could blog about, you know, we have this thing here in my family about how to take the trash out, you know, and, and, and uh it comes up short sometimes on when other people are doing it. Yeah. But, and that's, <laughs> I think another key ingredient, maybe this is a bonus point is if you write from your own personal experience and perspective, it's more interesting to people Yes, rather than, you know, pontificating about some theological topic. You, yeah. you write about, well, this is how I do allowances in my family I and, mean, you know, people's ears perk up and, yeah. And, and, you know, if you are, you know, and we're addressing this to pastors for the most part, you know, your people want to know you. Right. If you're a senior pastor or, or a key leader in your church, people want to know you. They they want to know what's going on in your life. They're not trying to be nosy, but they just want to get to know you. And and so anytime you're transparent, that was always my weakness. I've been speaking publicly since the 1970s. And it's really over the last maybe maybe the last 10 years is I've really gotten more transparent I can get up and talk about things, but I would give very little examples from my own life. Mm -hmm. But really, people want to know, you know, what's going on in your life. If if you're a leader in your church, if you're a key person in your church, they want to get to know you. Yeah. And so, blogging, as well as other things, can can you can open up a part of your life. Now, obviously, you want to be careful, and you, you know, you want to use some discretion on some right. of the things in your life. But but for the things that you deal with. Uh, they want to know that you're human too, that you have issues, that you have struggles, just like everybody else. Yep. I, I think that's the bottom line. So that's some thoughts out there on blogging. I think it's a very important thing to do. If you've got the ability to do that, uh, if you've got the tools to do that, which just about every website does now, 
uh, or you can get, you can use, um, what are some of the blog platforms? Google has a blog platform. I think it's called Blogger. Uh, that's an option. Uh, WordPress uh, was originally, I think, set up as a blog. Yeah, you know? It definitely was. Yeah, uh, WordPress.org. Yeah, you mm-hmm. know. To use it for free. There's different platforms out there that you could use for your blogging. Uh, and again, I'll just say this as we wrap this up. You know, make sure you have somebody proofread it. Uh, it's always good to have a different set of eyes look at things. Uh, because if you're going to blog, you don't want to have a bunch of typos and, you know, those kind of things. Because, hey, once it's out there, it's available. People can see it from I, all over the world. I have a really good friend that's uh, a pastor and... If his wife didn't proofread for him, I mean, I get to see a lot of his content that's not proofread and I'm like, oh my gosh, <laughs> we need to go through this before it sees the light of day. My so, uh, my wife was a legal secretary for years and, and, and I still let her proofread a lot of my stuff, but she will always come up with a better way to say it, yeah. which is probably good good as well. I mean, there's mm-hmm. there is there are better ways to say things and sometimes it's nice to get a different opinion, but that's a whole other issue. So... If you have anything you'd like to add to this, we'd love to hear from you. Support at streamingchurch.tv. Very quickly before we wrap up, uh, as we promised, Steve Lacey is the president, CEO, and founder, and and the big shot here at JSL Solutions. What does JSL Solutions do, Steve? So JSL Solutions serves ministries with technology. So we have actually four products now. Uh, Started with MyFlock.com, which is church management and websites and, mm-hmm. and assimilation tool that started as a social network and um, streaming church.tv live streaming church app live is mobile apps and our latest adventure is greeter.church which is an online greeter for your website a real life chat support person for anyone visiting your church website and since that's new i'll just say just go to type in greeter.church in your browser and that's that's where you can find the website for it, greeter.church, and you can look it over. And, uh, you know, we have like a 10-day trial. And you it's, could, it's just a matter of grabbing some code and putting it on your website, and you can have a live person answer questions. Because as we have talked about here before, when people are looking for a church, where's the first place they go? To the web. Usually to your website. They find you on the web and they look you over. And so that's why having video on there is good and audio is good so people can get a feel and and, you know, and sense having, for what you do, but now you can have somebody to talk to Then people can actually answer questions for them about your church. You might say, how does that work? Well, just let us know. Just send us an email support at greeter.church. <laughs> it's easy. All right. All right. We are done. Uh, folks, thank you spent, for spending a little bit of time with us today on the Church Solutions Podcast. We hope that you have a great day and we will catch you next week on another edition of the Church Solutions Podcast. Take care. <laughs>